Welcome to an episode of Find Your Voice, a movement led by yours truly, Aaron Dew, a guy who has overcome crippling anxiety, adversity, and difficulty like so many of you in life, whose main goal now is to help you combat your excuses, take control of your life, write your own story, and most importantly, find your voice. So now, without further ado, I welcome the host of the show himself, Mr. Aaron Dew. What's going on people? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Find Your Voice. My name is Aaron and as always, I am the host of the show. So today's story is from Al and she speaks about her truth, her truth being depression. Now Al sadly has been battling with depression for quite some time now, having previously suffered with anxiety as well. And she's suffered with a whole heap of adversity, like many of us listening here today. She's had people die to cancer, her best friend, her nan. She's also had circumstances in her life that have really forced her to look deep and try and find, I suppose, the meaning behind the pain that she's going through. But more importantly than that, she's a mother, a very proud mother. She's a blogger, a writer, and she definitely does have the coolest name for a blog I've ever come across. The Randomness of Unicorns. And I remember when I first interviewed her, I had only read one blog. And since then, I've literally been binging on her blogs because they're very thought-provoking. They're very honest. They're very raw and straight to the point. It's very authentic. And I absolutely love that about Elle and her story. So hopefully you find this useful. I want to once again thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to this show, to support this show, because obviously time is our most important commodity. So I'm fully appreciative of you taking time out. And obviously I want to make this show for you guys. I want to try and give you the most value. Hence why I have people like my previous guest and obviously Al today giving you amazing words of wisdom and hopefully tangible takeaways that you can take and find more happiness and fulfillment in your own lives. So without further ado, let's get this interview on the way. So Al, firstly, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So before we begin, I think it's very important, obviously, for the listeners of this show to get an insight in relation to who we have on the show today. So Al, if you wouldn't mind, if you could just kind of give us a little bit about your life, a bit about your summary, and maybe tell us what brings you here today on Find Your Voice. Okay, um, well, I'm a writer. I've been writing for quite a few years now, um, probably about six or seven years. Um, I started a blog um, about the same time ago. Um, and like you said, it's more of a, a, a thought provoking blog. Um, I notice a lot of blogs fit into like lifestyle or um, health or fitness. I guess it's kind of all of those things um, based on my experiences that I kind of um, put together in a a um, sometimes a, like a, a fictional fashion or um, uh, nonfiction depends what um, I'm delivering and try and get people to kind of think about things just a little bit more than they usually would. Um, and with regards to mental health, um, I started a mental health blog probably about three months ago um, after living with a mental health condition for quite a while. Um, and I decided that it would be quite good if I was quite open about that um, in order to kind of let people know that, they, uh, you know, there's someone out there that feels the same way. Um, because I felt um, like I was the only one that felt how I felt and kind of reading other people's blogs and um, going on Instagram and things like that kind of um, really helped me. So I thought I could do the same thing. And so I do have a day job, um, but my passion, uh, absolute passion is writing. Um, and I do that freelance. Apologies there, the sound just cut off. You said you did something full time? Yeah, so I have a day job. Okay. Um, I work in schools, a day job. Um, and yeah, I write um, outside of that. Brilliant. And you just touched on something really nice there, which was um, that you at one point felt that the stuff you were going through, that you were alone with that. And I suppose, yeah. obviously, the more now you're starting to share your blogs and stuff, you're realising actually, especially mental health, it's not something that is exclusive to one person. It's definitely not. And I feel like um, I feel like in a way what um, I'm living with is a positive thing because the things that I see in the world where people don't talk about certain things, um, I can be that example. So I have to be, um, I see it as a kind of mission to be honest about how I feel and what I'm going through. So everyone else can see that and kind of be the same. And if we're all honest together, people in the dark won't feel so, so lonely about it. I love that message, Al. That's 
pretty much the whole premise behind the show find your voice but i love that we're able to get someone who's almost finding their voice although through a blog but having that same positive thing and for someone to go through mental health and have a positive sway on it should i say has it always been that easy to see it as a positive or is it something that through your blogging and maybe through your journey that you've been able to kind of see it as a positive oh gosh i think first of all i want to say that it's not easy yeah um, and I'm able to say it and I believe it, but I want people to know that, <clears throat> excuse me, just because I'm saying it now, there are not days, doesn't mean that there are not days where um, I find it difficult to say. So I just want to mm. make that very clear. Don't think that, you know, I'm the full picture and I'm just, you know, completely accomplished and it's all plain sailing now because it's not because um, mental health is kind of up and down. You know, we all have mental health and some of us have ill mental health periods. Um, and there are days where it's quite difficult to see those things, but these are the reminders that I tell myself um, in order to try and get me back on top. But it has taken quite a while for me to get to kind of this place to, to believe that um, it does get better. And um, there are things that can help and you can help yourself more than you realise. That's brilliant. And I think it's really commendable. And I acknowledge you actually for sharing your vulnerabilities and somebody like yourself who has these incredible thought-provoking blogs and does this amazing work out there to actually say, you know what, it's actually not like this every single day. Some days are bad, some days are good. And I try and obviously put that through, find your voice. And this is the whole premise of the show is to show you these incredible people like yourself who are doing amazing things in the world, but also showing you actually they also feel just like you and me. Can I just delve a little bit more into that if I may? The whole mental health and depression with yourself how did that kind of stem is that been something that you've lived with for a prolonged period of time or has it come in more recently um so I would say it's a prolonged period of time I think um it started about four years ago um I was quite unwell I had an operation that didn't go so well and um, it was actually meant to be quite a simple procedure and following that and my health kind of deteriorated after that and I started to suffer with um, anxiety um and I think most of the time when it starts with anxiety, the depression comes in um, from being, you know, so so tired from the, the level of anxiety that you're suffering with. Um, it's inevitable that your mood will drop. Um, and I've kind of been up and down, up and down with that. Um, even most recently this year, um, I've been off work for quite a while. I spent, I think, about five months off work um, in a rough period dealing with anxiety that was just just so debilitating that um I felt into me in my head it was like I had to take a step away from life I had to take a break and that break meant you know not being able to go to work and kind of taking it step by step to you know basics like getting out of the house um you know going to the shop doing things um and uh that was just it was really really needed and I'm not um ashamed of having to take time off work or um you know needing further help I reached out for help um after quite a long time um NHS services to do with mental health in the UK are not the best unfortunately um but um I did reach out um and yeah that's kind of trying to find my way from that place upwards thank you for sharing that um so I, I liked what you just said there you weren't ashamed of asking for help and I can only imagine for some people listening that might be a natural problem it might actually be an obstacle what would you sort of just trying to word this without sounding too clumsy have you got any pieces of advice or anything that you could maybe just say sorry if I'm putting you on the spot here for somebody who may feel slightly ashamed or maybe that they don't have somebody that they can reach out to or confide in um I would say that what you're going through is not unique it is not just you um, the happiest of people have their down days and although you may feel that yours are a bit more severe it doesn't you know the the similarities are there uh, it doesn't get better unless you reach out and if you are honest about the way you're feeling with either someone around you or your GP um, I think it's impossible not to take someone seriously in that kind yeah. of distress um, and that's the first step just saying you know what I'm not feeling great and I haven't been feeling great for a long time and this is how I feel you may not have a name for it and that's absolutely fine but describing your symptoms to someone else um, I'm sure you'll get back something that is valuable in order to, to come out of that and kind of move to the next step I love that I just want to quickly touch on something else you said now I have suffered with anxiety for I'd probably say 
I'm, I'm trying to do a lot of self-reflection and a lot of self-awareness in terms of going back into my story. And I think it really stemmed from around the age of 11 or 12 when I went into secondary school. And I think when I went to secondary school, it was a grammar school, so it was a boys' school. I went from being the smartest kid to no longer being the smartest kid. And a lot of things started to change and my confidence definitely took a uh, hammering. And going back to the point, you mentioned getting tired from anxiety. And as you said that, a light bulb just switched on because... I've never linked my tiredness to anxiety and I am very health conscious and sometimes I'd sit there and I'd be like I've eaten right I've hydrated I've exercised I've slept well why do I feel almost lethargic or just kind of tired and I think you've hit the nail on the head there because a lot of it is this nervous energy that I'm always kind of trying to harness and almost trying to push down all the time that sometimes just leaves me feeling flat if, if that yeah. makes any sense so uh, sense. if anyone's listening and you're kind of getting those symptoms I think that's something that should definitely raise a, a flag and maybe then do what Al's just mentioned in terms of just reaching out and it won't get better until we take that first step so I'm always conscious of trying to make that first step and not almost ending in depression because I've seen what depression has done to my family and I can only sympathize mm. with people who are going through it because it is real and although we don't see it on the surface, it's something that we definitely need to be more mindful of. So thank you for sharing that. Elle. Obviously, it's um, it's a personal matter, but I know that you are blogging and it's something that I, I've only read one, if I'm being completely transparent, but I really did enjoy it. You said a quote which resonated with me from the start, which was, we take for granted what works well and is automatic about our bodies. And I love that because it's only until it's gone. It's only until I started becoming shy and anxious and fearful of doing simple things like speaking to people or looking people in the eye that I realized how much I took that for granted and obviously for yourself I'm sure it's more on a health perspective so if we look at today then what's your routine like in terms of how do you cope and how do you best put the odds in your favor on a daily basis um I think the best thing uh, is sleep first of all mm. um I've noticed a big difference between how I feel uh, throughout the day even when I first wake up related to the type of sleep that I have at night so I try to make sure I've got a really good um, bedtime routine okay. um, <clears throat> excuse me um, and that involves not just making sure I get to bed at a decent time um, kind of relaxing and unwinding at night but also when I get up having another routine that can kind of energize me so that the balance is mm. um, equal because I find that once you're asleep um, as soon as you wake up, your mind just falls into your um, default habits mm. and your default habits, if they're negative, they will just bring you down straight away if you don't catch them as soon as you get up. Um, that's important. Mm -hmm. um, I also find that exercise is quite good. Um, I try to be active in the morning for like the first 30 minutes. Um, it could be something like yoga. It could be like a, you know, like a circuit type thing, maybe a um, something that gets your heart racing for 30 minutes, just cool down, then a stretch. Um, eating breakfast is something that I find that's really important. Mm -hmm. My mood can instantly change from, um, you know, from not having eaten to, to eating a meal and feeling much brighter. Um, and with that, I think, goes along with water. Water is so important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, people underestimate how much water is um, so valuable for the body, not just the body, but the mind as well. Um, and making sure you're getting at least a litre, if you know, push it to two mm -hmm. litres if you can, because that's ideal, but at least a litre of water um, a day is quite good. Um, I stay away from caffeine, so I don't have any, like, coffee or energy drinks or anything like that, any fizzy drinks. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of um, meditation as well helps. Um, I meditate throughout the day, so if I'm at work and I've got a break, um, I'll take five minutes to do a meditation. Mm -hmm. When I get up out of bed, if I don't want to do a meditation, I'll find sort of like a inspirational video to watch on YouTube or something. Um, and then at night, the same thing, meditation as well, trying to keep the, the, the mind still for a bit in order to just, you know, calm the body and the nervous system. That's really interesting. And I just want to ask on that meditation. So I recently heard uh, somebody mention meditation. I mean, actually, a lot of people have been saying meditation is really, really great in terms of becoming still and almost becoming present in the moment there was somebody else though who said something quite interesting and I thought the next person that speaks about meditation I'm going to ask him so Al unfortunately that is you <laughs> oh. <laughs> what this individual actually said was that he understands the whole premise behind being still and kind of getting those thoughts and just moving them aside 
what he actually said was that he kind of acknowledges his thoughts yeah. now he didn't go too much into the detail in terms of the whole practice have you any thoughts on that is it something that you do acknowledge i.e if it's a negative thing and you maybe try and change it for a positive or is it literally just trying to clear your thoughts in those five minutes it is impossible to clear your thoughts completely there is no there's going to be you know it's not possible to have a moment where you're not thinking anything the mind is always always thinking always working the point is that you're you're able to acknowledge the thoughts but not let them consume you so your mind is working for you so it's okay to think um my therapist once said to me well you know if i tell you i've got a big white giant bunny on my head and now i've just told you that i don't want you to think about the big white giant bunny on my head can you do that and she gave me impossible it's just you can't do it so it's about um and i'll put it in terms of something that i heard on headspace it's like passing ships so a thought comes into your head and that's on the ship and you say oh that is a negative thought let it pass um another one might come and you say oh that that's worrying let that pass another one might come that's an anxious thought you just let it pass acknowledge it and let it sail past you I love that. I think now it makes a lot more sense what he was trying to say. I think I just misinterpreted it. So it's all about acknowledging it. And I think what you just said there in terms of it's impossible to not actually think of something. I'm glad you actually said that because I've tried to meditate numerous times and I feel like every guest I now have, especially recently, they're saying it as a part of their routine. And the reason I asked that question is because I want to take tips from people who have a higher level of thinking or have been through more experiences than myself or just something that I feel will help me in my life and hopefully help the listeners. So just knowing that it's impossible not to think of stuff definitely helps me because when I've sat there for five or six minutes, I'm thinking about the most crazy things <laughs> in the world, <laughs> almost like the things I don't want to be thinking about. And then you're almost consuming yourself and you're getting irritated because you think of that even more, a bit like your example just there. So yep. that's interesting. I think what I need to do is I might actually try and categorize it and be like, okay, this is maybe a pointless thought or this is a negative thought. Let's just try and move that on. And I like that passing ships idea. I've seen a similar thing. I think it was by Prince EA where he had almost like a radio show frequency and he was kind of seeing it as in the thoughts that they'll pass and he was like, you just change the station basically. So uh, that's a brilliant analogy. So uh, thank you for sharing that. In terms of your diet then, and I want to ask this because diet for me is just as important as the stuff we put into our brains so is your diet consistent of anything in particular or are you quite flexible in terms of what you have um it is it does consist of particular things like for instance i try to limit my sugar mm. um i actually gave up sugar for a fundraiser a couple of months ago Fantastic. Um, and i decided to keep it going it was literally no junk food and anything with added sugar was not allowed natural sugars like honey and fruit were allowed um but I didn't have anything and I found that when I started to go back to sugar a couple months later I realized the effect it had on my body so it would make me sugar rushes would give me it would make me anxious all of a sudden because my body was just in alert like quite quickly and I was just didn't know what to do with it um so now I try and keep sugar in in moderation and after having given it up I actually don't consume the same amount of sugar that I did before um, which also helps. I find that really helpful. Um, water, as I say, I only drink water, sparkling water particularly, which most people don't like, but I love yeah. <laughs> sparkling water with lemon if you want to make it more exciting okay. or plain water, um, whatever works for you. Um, I try and eat, I eat a lot of fruit. Um, I eat about maybe four or five pieces of fruit a day. I love fruit. Um, and making sure I have breakfast. That is the, just the, the big one breakfast is a must a must absolute must there's no way that you can have like a you know eight or nine hours sleep and wake up and not eat anything and expect to be at your best for the day it's just not going to happen so um breakfast i usually have a smoothie that i bring with me to work and maybe like porridge or cereal in the morning and toast if i've if i've got it as well um just to keep the, the um, energy levels up okay Fantastic. So I was actually laughing halfway through that. So I'm agreeing with pretty much everything you're saying. I love the sleep. I love the water and even the headspace. The only thing I was 
nodding against was the sparkling water but i will try it with yeah. lemon <laughs> because I, I can't stand it and once or twice i've gone to a shop and i've picked up the wrong one and i've opened the bottle and drank it and be like oh, what is this and it's like it's a horror moment so uh, i'll definitely try it with lemon and i'll let yeah. you know how that goes please do definitely and i'm just interested actually you mentioned a fundraiser as well what was that fundraiser for so that was for um cancer research that was back in february they were doing like a uh, a campaign called No Sugar February. Um, and to be honest, I was a sugar addict before that. Sugar was mm. just my advice. Um, some people smoke, some people drink. I ate sugar. And it was the <laughs> yeah. hardest thing I've ever done. Mm. Um, there were all kinds of withdrawal symptoms, but it was so worth it. And my attitude to sugar has, has just changed. I'm able to go without it now and feel absolutely fine. That's brilliant. Um, and when I do have it, I have it in such small amounts now. Um, it's just been life-changing. It's been great. That's fantastic. Good on you. And was it cancer for any particular reason or was it just because that was what was going on at the time? Um, it was just for cancer research. Um, my story was that um, my nan had died from cancer quite a few mm. years ago, breast cancer. Um, and unfortunately, a couple of years ago, my best friend passed away. Um, she was under 30 when she passed away um, from breast cancer. So I wanted to raise mm. I'm sorry to hear about your nan and your best friend. Cancer is obviously something uh, I've, I've spoken about on the show. We've had some people who have actually lost loved ones as well with cancer. It's a, it's a horrible illness and something that I think if anyone can fundraise anything and if next year they do that again, I am a bit of a sugar addict, so I do like my desserts. I would definitely, and I'm putting this live on show now, is uh, you can make me accountable for it. I would definitely join you on that journey because uh, I'd, lo- I'd love to help and uh, raise any awareness for cancer. So count me in next year then yeah we'll, wicked. We'll, we'll have to do it together yeah absolutely Definitely. fantastic brilliant so okay so i'm going to segue a little bit now so i think the listeners obviously get to know you a little bit now in terms of you know you've got a routine you're obviously struck on trying to make an impact through your words more so probably than your voice at the minute but yeah. i'm very glad to obviously have you telling your story as well what i want to do is i want to touch on a time of adversity that you've been through in your life but more importantly what i want to do is if you could give sorry the listeners maybe the lessons that you've learned from it and uh, what it's taught you in that moment? I think um, instead of like one particular situation, there have been moments where I felt like life is over for want of a better word. Um, and I would say those difficult times, those um, really dark moments, those, those dark thoughts, um, what I've learned is that they pass and sometimes it's about uh, counting the seconds. You know, you don't know how you can get through the day, but if you can count, to five and then stop and then count another five um, and keep going until the feeling passes because although we don't feel like um, feelings do they do pass they don't stay the same forever that's good and bad feelings um, so those times have been very very difficult um, and looking back I feel like it, it would have you know if I chose to, to go down that route and kind of you know um, end my life it would have been a, a a um a split second decision based on on something that I felt would never end but actually it did it did end um and even though that that that's really hard to remember in the moment but it's, it's something that um you know we sh- it should stick with us um that really really helped me um and probably um having a lot of time off work um kind of something that I found difficult not only having time off work but dealing with why I was having time off work um, not being ashamed of why I was having time off work and kind of being honest about why I was not at work Um, and then going back to it afterwards and trying to get back into a routine once you're out of one and trying to get back on the horse was um, especially tricky but it, it can be done. I love that I think that's something very tangible and something that we can all probably take away not so much myself personally in terms of that life is over moment and I'm just grateful that you obviously realized in that moment it would have been a split second decision and obviously you chose the the, the one that I'm, I'm happy that you did but I just think that thing you said there and as you're saying it about it will pass good or bad emotions and just count it to five seconds I think that's really really important and when you say five seconds it, it almost becomes something that you can actually instantly do so if I'm telling someone just get through that hour they're almost rolling their eyes at me and thinking well you don't know what I'm going through in this particular moment but if you just ask someone maybe just I don't know control your breathing think about the next five seconds just try and get through that just try and get through that and like you said it will pass and I think that's really really important because 
I am a worrier. I am that kind of person where something very trivial can go wrong and I'm, I'm screaming thinking it's the end of the world. I've been that person and I've literally consumed myself and made myself ill from it. And I think I'm in a much better place now. And I just want to throw in my own little bit on this. I'm not an expert on it, but I've recently read a book and it was recommended by my best friend and it's called How to Stop Worrying and Start Living by Dale Carnegie. So if anyone ever has an opportunity, I'm not even sure if you've read that before, Al, or if you actually need to, but if you ever maybe find yourself in a state of worry where, where it's consuming you, that book is absolutely fantastic because what it would do is give you real life examples of people who almost consumed their lives and died from stress because there's a great quote that says, uh, it's not hard work that will kill you, it's actually stress. And stress has so many complications to it. So if we can limit people's stress by either using this five second rule, which I think is brilliantly put, or using that book, I think would be in a much better place. And obviously that's what I want to be trying to do with this show. So uh, thank you for sharing that. And well, uh, I hope you're in a much, much better place now. Obviously you've got a lot more self-awareness and a lot more tools in your toolkit. So yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. And knowing what you know now then, Al, what's your biggest fear? Oh, gosh, I think um, I think my biggest fear, I think I've got a couple. I think the, one of them is that I will hit my lowest again, that it's, it's um, going really well now and I feel good um, most days, but there will be a point where I will kind of lose control of myself and, and hit that, that bottom rock, rock bottom and just I'll be back to kind of square one if you want to call it mm-hmm. um and not only that but I, I feel like um uh I don't want to live a life where I'm kind of as I felt battling against my mental health so um you know when I when I get older and I you know end up on my deathbed or whatever I'm I'm just I don't want to look back and feel like I, I didn't really live because I was so focused on beating this thing out of me or beating this thing up that I didn't have any experiences I didn't enjoy myself I don't have anything to show for my life and I don't have any good memories apart from ill mental health I just just yeah I really don't want that now I'm just trying to clap my thoughts there because obviously I'm not medically qualified to respond in relation to giving you tangible advice on that but when you said that lose control bit and hitting your lowest again the the reason that struck me a little bit was because my mum has been going through chronic depression for eight years and I think that's probably her biggest fear and it's that fear of I don't want to go back and we sit there and we you know we bounce ideas back and forth because touch wood it hasn't happened and things they'll move forward three steps and we'll probably take two steps back occasionally three steps back Um, but one of the things is always knowing in the back of your head that one day I've been in a better situation and previously I was also in a better situation as well so it's knowing that Mental health hasn't always been a part of me, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And, and that kind of drives me, if I'm completely honest. I mean, I still suffer with the silliest of anxious moments in terms of just asking people questions or speaking to strangers. And I have all these weird things that still consume me. But I know there was a kid back then, whether it was the age of 10 or 11, who wasn't afraid of anything. And I kind of work on myself daily to try and get that back. And I have kind of shifted it, I suppose, slightly different to yourself, whereas I don't mind being the anxious guy. Um, But but the only reason I don't mind that is because I want people to draw strength from that to see, hold on, this guy, he has suffered with anxiety. He was always able to shy from all the teachers, all the peers, all my work reports. My colleagues were like, he's very quiet. Yet here I am now doing a live podcast across the world. So that's kind of, I suppose, my spin on it. I think you're definitely much more than somebody with mental health. I mean, this is just a very brief conversation, but even through your blogging, and again, we, we touch on that, I'm sure there's other stuff that you bring to the world that will always leave a legacy other than just somebody who had mental health. So please never feel like that. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And I want to actually move you then, hopefully towards something that will cheer you up, hopefully, which is if I could say to you tomorrow, we can click our fingers and you can wake up and you can live the ultimate day. What would be that thing? Ooh, that's a big question. Um, it will probably involve writing somewhere um, mm. on a beach. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it on a beach chilling um yeah it always involves words when I think of things that make me happiest um yeah something something like that um and just knowing that that will kind of make me feel like I'm I'm powerful like I could do anything 
um, I can be somewhere and I can do something that I really enjoy and it's those kind of things that that uplift me and let me remember that there's there's more to this than absolutely mental health like you said absolutely and in, in relation to your your words um that you put so beautifully in your in your blogs have you got any visions of maybe writing books or publishing elsewhere or is it just blogging that you really enjoy doing um i'd love to write a book actually um okay. uh, i have been working on something for a while um anxiety based um and i just i love putting words together and i feel like um if i could have that in a kind of collection as a book or multiple books that would be um, really great for me and I feel like it could be quite valuable absolutely absolutely I, th- I think it'd be great so we are actually going to go into a completely different part of the show and this part of the show is not something that you would have any idea about because I haven't told you about it but long story short it's going to be 60 to 90 seconds of just a bit of fun where we're going to ask you random questions just questions not related to your adversity not related to Anything, I suppose, that we could consider dark, and I put that in inverted commas, so it's okay. to give the listeners a little bit more about your personality. So uh, whenever you're ready, we're going to get started. Okay, cool. No worries. Okay, we're going to start in three, two, one. L, if you could abolish one thing in the world, what would it be? Oh, the death penalty. Your favourite hobby? Oh, writing. What are you secretly good at that nobody knows? Oh, uh, crochet. Your biggest role model? I don't, I don't know. That's pretty really bad, isn't it? <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't answer that one. Okay, no, no problem. Uh, what would you like to be remembered for? Being positive, happy, and uplifting people whenever they needed it. I love that. Your biggest goal this year? Oh, that would have been starting the mental health blog and going back to work. Your worst mistake? Being ashamed of having a mental health issue. If you could relive one day again, what day would it be? I don't think I would. I think I'm, I'm happy. I'm good. The ability to fly or be invisible? Oh, be invisible. I'm scared of fights. <laughs> <laughs> the number one thing that annoys you? Oh, bad manners. Please be kind. Please be nice. Please and thank you. I love that. Money or fame? Mm, fame because you can use it positively and it's love, not money, that makes the world go around. Netflix or YouTube? Oh, Netflix. If you could sit with one person in the world for an hour, who would it be? I think it would be my nan, it would be. I love that. What is your biggest addiction? Oh, buying books and not reading them. <laughs> <laughs> your favourite motivational speaker? The Cot Tolo. Would you rather know how you would die or when you would die? How? Your favourite place in the world? My bed, I think. <laughs> your favourite song ever Gabrielle by Roy Davis Jr featuring Kevin Everett read minds or predict the future read minds and finally your favourite superhero oh Wonder Woman I've got a tattoo of Wonder Woman on my arm brilliant how'd you find that oh really exciting I like that last bit it's fun good 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 I just think it's always useful because sometimes we delve so much into the stories of people I want the uh, listeners to just get to know a little bit more about you in terms of your personality so uh, that that was really interesting okay (laughs) so we're almost actually at the end of the show where we've just got two questions left one's going to be about legacy but before we get onto that question I want to ask you about reflection so I'm a firm believer that hindsight is a wonderful thing as upon reflection we can always think of ways to get to where we are currently easier quicker or with less heartache But I'm also a firm believer that the journey teaches us so much and that everything happens for a reason. So what I want to know is, knowing exactly what you know now, everything, all your wisdom and everything, if you could take that back to a younger Elle and whisper something in her ears, maybe when she was a little bit anxious or confused with life, what would you say? Oh, I think I would say, um, I'd say it gets better. It's going to get better. Mm. Um, You're going to get better. You're going to evolve so much as a person and um, having a mental uh, health issue is actually going to be something that can be a positive. It's going to be a superpower. Mm. You're going to learn so much about yourself and you're actually going to become the person you've always wanted, but you, you, you can't be ashamed. You have to speak up about it first. I love that. I love that. And sadly, that actually does bring us to the last part of the show, which is about legacy. Okay. So, Elle, if in 150 years' time, science fails to save you, me, and everyone around us, but all that exists is a book, and this book is about you, and it's about all the incredible, amazing things that you've done, all the ups and downs as well. Firstly, what would the title of the book say? And secondly, what would the blurb at the back tell us about you? 
Gosh, the title. Um, I'm going to cheat and do blurb first. I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the blurb would say it would be a story about um, a woman who felt like um, uh, life was about to end multiple times, mm. but actually she was she was really strong just for hanging on. And um, when she realised that she was actually really strong and she was hanging on, her life changed completely. And it got. Mm. Um, as for a title. Mm, I don't know. I'm thinking of Harry Potter because I love Harry Potter. So it might be the woman who lived, which is the first chapter of the Harry Potter book, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Would be the woman who lived. And also, I just want to add on the blurb bit as well. I'm so glad that it never ended. Um, and I do acknowledge your strength as well. And I just love the bit about not being ashamed. And I just hope that people can take and draw strength from your story uh, in terms of let's not be ashamed of what we may consider flaws because it can truly be a superpower. It can truly be our gift. I'm a firm believer that adversity, although in that moment you might be thinking it's there to crumble you and kind of take away from you. But in hindsight, when I seriously sit back and I think about all the, the hardships that I've been through or the stories that I've heard from incredible guests like yourself, it's actually in those moments where we sometimes find our purpose or we sometimes find that ability to tap into something that is that's incredible. And maybe that transpires through your writing as well, because I, again, I... I'm taking a guess here, but I reckon your writing is so much more powerful now because there's probably so much emotion and experience that you've been through that you can put onto paper when you're writing those stories because of your experiences. So uh, I always try and use that adversity as a gift. I know it's a bit cliche, but I just don't want people to see it as, you know, why is the world after me? Because I don't believe there's fair. I just think, it's again, it comes down to our thoughts and it's the thoughts that we attach and the meanings we attach to stuff that can really dictate our life. So... I acknowledge your strength. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, I do. And I fully agree with what you said about thoughts. I really do. Mm, mm. And Al, just before we leave the show and I give the listeners a chance to connect with you, I want to ask, is there anything that you wish that maybe I could have asked you that you would want to share with my uh, listeners? Um, yeah, actually, this, yeah. there is. Um, I do. actually have two children as well. Um, and I just want to, anyone who is suffering with it with a, a mental illness or mental health and they have children, it's quite possible um, to come through the adversity, even though you are responsible for little ones. Mm, mm, yeah, I love that. And can I just ask actually, just to yeah. attach to that, what's the number one thing you would like maybe the people around you or people who come in contact with you to do? And the reason I asked that, and I'm going to quickly give you an answer just in case that d didn't make complete sense, is when I sat with my mum and I asked her, what would you have liked? Because initially when she went through depression, we had no idea what it was. And especially coming from an Asian family, it was definitely a taboo subject. So it was almost like, why are you depressed? You know, you've got you've got a house, you've got a car, your kids are fine. And it was always that kind of mentality that surrounded her. And obviously as we became more aware with it and we understood it, we understood that, you know, it's it's a real illness. One of the things she said to me, I think it was a few years later, was I just wanted someone to listen. Yeah. I, I didn't necessarily want you to solve it because I knew you couldn't solve it, but maybe just listen. So is there something, maybe it could be the same answer or something that you'd maybe urge people out there who may have somebody suffering with depression around them? What would you recommend? Um, yeah, that is just listening. And also remember that it's not a material thing. It's not a physical thing. It's not a situational thing, although it can come from something that is environmental. Mm. Um, it is perception uh, predominantly. So, you know, the person is talking from the place of how they view things and how they feel about things. Mm. So you kind of put in your two pence in and say, well, you know, you have a car and you've yeah. got a good job and what have you got to be sad about? It's nothing to do with sadness whatsoever. Mm. So, so listening and bearing that in mind whilst you're listening and kind of pinpointing them to, to places that can help them if you feel that you're out of your depth. Thank you. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And just... As we finish the show, Al, uh, what is the best place that people can connect with you, read your blogs, and just maybe say hi, if that's okay with you? Oh, Instagram. I love Instagram. Probably a bit too much. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> my at is lformosa underscore LDN. Um, I've got my blog on there and also my email, so people can, can email me. And my DMs are always open. I always say, if you're having a bad day, um, and you can relate to something that I post, hit me up in the DM. I'll always respond to you. I love that. I love that message. So I urge everyone to follow this amazing woman who's been very brave to share her story on today's episode of Find Your Voice. I want to thank you for taking time out of your day for sharing your story and everyone at home. Thanks for listening. Thank you. 
And remember, this podcast is absolutely free. So all we ask in return is for you to share this with a friend and drop us a five-star review over on iTunes. Have an awesome day.